to this new project that's been going on for a couple months, the High Balloon, High Altitude Balloon Project. Now, there's just so many cool anomalies up there in the sky, and wouldn't it be nice to hook a GoPro up to a balloon that could go 100,000 feet into the atmosphere and pick up some really cool UFOs? Well, if you can't do it, guess who is doing it? Steve. Hey, Steve, how the heck are you, man? It's great to have you on the show. I'm doing great, having a good day today, Rex. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure. I mean, every time we do a show, I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments and emails saying, you've got to get Steve back on. This guy is awesome. And with all the people that we talk to about Planet X and Nibiru, I think some of the stuff you bring to the table is just absolutely cutting edge. So uh, first off, if we could, I know that we're looking at a screenshot right now of one of your more recent balloon launchings, and I was wondering if you could talk to us about it. Absolutely. So this is... This, uh, this was flight number six, and it was the last flight that we did. Now what we're doing is we're reducing back up for the next set of flights, series of flights. We're going to do them a little bit further south, like in Illinois. A little flatter land, easier to recover the balloon. So what we do is we basically hook our camera equipment up to a, uh, a, a three, in this case, a 350-gram high-altitude balloon. It's a, it's a weather balloon. And um, the highest we got on flight number four was we got up to 90,000 feet, but the whole sky was obfuscated because it turns black at that altitude. And so, lesson learned, this was the flight that I was supposed to get into the, um, get, get it punched up to 90,000 feet, and then I was going to be able to see through this co cloud layer straight up with a high exposure camera. So, the plan was working great. I was about, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes into the flight so far. I would guess that it was probably somewhere around 25 to 30,000 feet at this stage, um, maybe a little higher. And all of a sudden, over my head, shows uh, this chemtrailer shows up. And um, I'll show this to you in a second, but basically what you're going to see is a UFO is going to enter frame. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm saying this. Uh, a UFO enters frame and then flies around the chemtrailer, then disappears out of frame. And then a little bit later, which I can't show you that video right now because I'd have to you know, search for it, but it's on one of my videos. Uh, basically shows back up again about 30 minutes later. And then when I retrieve the balloon... Um, I had basically about one third of the footage I was expecting. All the cameras were off and the bat and the batteries were full or almost full. So basically what they did was they turned me off on this particular mission. I pretty much believe that's, I know it's crazy. Doesn't that sound, can you believe that I'm doing this insane stuff, Rex? I mean, is this just crazy or what? I mean, truth is stranger than fiction, Steve. We've had guests on the show that talk about making contact with extraterrestrials in uh, Central, you know, in Central Park, Times Square. And so this is not crazy, and I think that it's fascinating. Obviously, there's things out there that most of us will never have a chance to see. And I think with as much momentum as you've got right now at the Wormwood System Observer and with these different projects you're doing, they probably knew before you sent it out there that you were going to, and they're just kind of keeping an eye on you, man. Maybe they're letting you and your audience know, hey, we're out there. Yeah, it, this one definitely felt like um, they were watching for me to put up a balloon. And <laughs> so I thought I had them stumped because what I did was I rented a rental car. And I thought for sure they couldn't low jack that, right? Same day, drive out to the site. But I think as soon as I turn my GPS tracker on, and I think that's pretty much when they figure it out. But um because you use the GPS tracker to go retrieve the balloon wrecks. That's what we do. And Because there's a lot of expensive equipment on here. <laughs> right. I was asking about that because somebody brought up earlier, I wonder how he gets his stuff back. You know, I mean, if you're dropping Go GoPro cameras and these expensive weather balloons, that's an expensive shot if you only get it one time. That's right. And that's why we have to keep trying. It's not, a, it's not an inexpensive endeavor, and so that's why we ask for funding. We're not trying to, you know, um, fleece anybody. Trust me, man. Uh, we buy we buy the balloons direct from a uh, manufacturer. We you know we got the cost down per flight, um, and you know it's 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 going pretty well. But let me show you this UFO Rex. I think you're going to trip on this. I think a little bit. All right, so my balloon's making its way up in the air here. Give it a second, and you know oh look a chemtrailer, and you know it's just kind of flying, trying to get up above those clouds, right up, up as, above the head there. That's the third layer. Usually I have a third layer. Now as you as this aircraft circles around, now watch. It's going to show back up in frame here in just a second. And I just wanted you to get a feel for this, because you're also going to see that there's a halo around the sun when you see the sun itself. So we were getting some great shots. Check out that just trippy-looking um, lens flare. I mean, oh, yeah. it is 
Larry. It's intense. Larry, but what the heck? Right? What the heck, right? Uh-huh. All right, make a liar out of me now. This UFO should show up by now. Okay? No, 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 no. Yeah, but while we're looking at this, this balloon continually gains altitude, and what you start to see is you'll start to see a really clear manifestation of the sun itself is, is just got a, it just like a deep red halo on it. And actually, I saw that from uh, Wisconsin here again just now be uh, before we started the show. But when you, it turns out when I put the um, uh, balloons up, I can see it every time. So it's up there permanently, whatever that, that halo is, okay? How long does it take that uh, balloon to usually get up there, Steve? Uh, balloon flights last about three hours, and then it takes about an hour for it to come down. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah? Yeah, here it is. That's the chemtrailer. Okay. We'll just speed it up to the, to the key moment here. Now watch this. Sorry, guys, for the delay, but this is just, this is just amazing. So here's, I'm getting pretty, cl I'm actually getting pretty close to this, this next cloud layer. And then see that UFO come up from the bottom around the chemtrailer. It's going around right now. Do you see it? Yeah, a little white dot there. Now he's moving around. Yep, I can see yep, it. Yep, yep. He took so off he screen. Was, he's off screen now. So that plane was moving at about 450 miles an hour, and he just did a circle around it. I just want to note that. Jeez. And the and, way that and then moved later, was... Yeah, and then later it came back down around, and that's when the the camera became disabled. So they definitely found me on this flight. But here's that halo I'm talking about, right? And it is there 24-7. We see it from ISS. It's something that everybody can look for. All you need is a pair of sunglasses and look up at the sun and look around the edges of the sun, and you are going to see this red halo one day or another. Um, it's just conditions and how much chemtrailing they do, Rex. Everybody can see this halo now. Well, and nobody like talks about it. It looks Wait. like there was chemtrails just a moment ago, Steve, that uh, that was kind of dissipating. Is that correct? Yeah, you see that big cloud right there that developed mm -hmm. right over my balloon? Mm -hmm. That big vertical cloud that's in the middle right now? That came from a chemtrailer not more than three minutes prior. So you can see it's, it's leaving a lot of particulate or whatever it's happening. It's just making a huge particulate. And what I was specifically looking for on this day was a green planet. Um, there's uh, reports that we were seeing a green Naposti planet, or whatever they call it. And so I was trying to see if we could get a look at it. And I do get a lot of green shade and green color coming out, but I couldn't get above that cloud layer. So. That's fascinating. They weren't helping me. <laughs> yeah. You know, so the greatest that they gave you a write up. Like the UFO? Did you like the UFO video? Yeah, that was great, <laughs> man. Can, you know, have you ever zoomed in on that or tried to get a closer image of it? To see if you can no, get more I, detail? No, I haven't done much. I haven't done any of the uh, photo manipulation work yet. Well, like I said, this stuff's just, I have so much data to go through it right now. It's just been insane. Oh, I'm sure. So um, I'm going to give you a couple snippets from our show today. Um, and uh, basically, you know, there's, you know, we, we had a, a, Wayne Stiegler and I had a show today and we were just basically stopping on a couple of the things that, we thought were really important recently that we've discovered, okay? And if you're open to it, I'll share a couple of those things. That'd be great. So this first image, um, Rex, this is from Wayne, okay? Wayne Stiegler is one of my partners. He's been with me from the beginning, and he lives out in Colorado. And one day he was taking a picture, and he captures this um we don't know what it is. So we discussed it in our video today and we said, we'd like to challenge everybody though to tell me, and Wayne actually put a thousand dollar bet out there to say, first of all, if you can prove any of this has been photo manipulated, he'll pay you a thousand dollars. He took the picture, it's his image, so he's pretty safe on that. And number two, uh, that, how could that be a lens flare? Do you see how it's a round almost, or you almost can see the orb there and it's cutting off the light? I mean, do you think it's as bit that big? Again, this is what we're. This is where we're following the evidence, and that's what I wanted to introduce to you today. Okay. So as we continue to follow the evidence, what what what's just freaking us out right now is the fact that we think that this system might be. We might already have been in the system since 2011. Okay, I've heard that before. And the paradigm shift for us as we're following the evidence and doing you know this work is that we are not being orbited, but we are orbiting. We're orbiting a bigger system. Okay. That's the, that's the hypothesis that's coming out, okay? 
And so here's Wayne's video. He's actually showing me the video, and then we go through a couple of clips of it, and you can see here, you know, again, this is just one of those pieces of evidence that we just needed to stop on Rex and say, guys, we show you tons of pictures. Sometimes the pictures have stuff, good stuff in them, sometimes they don't. We passed over this picture, so we wanted to spend some real quality time on it together, right? So I want to spend some quality time with you on it. So here we've got this orb, you know, hanging out there in the middle of the sky, um, you know, Wayne tries to play his video here. It doesn't really work that well, but we'll get into some of the photo manipulation he got into. But this is a photograph that we took, right? Uh -huh. And then here, when you do a gamma enhancement, you can actually see that the, something is cutting the light off on these, on these streams of light. And so the only reason that we were even looking at this is because we ran into this guy named Samuel Hoffman, who was this genius that's been underground for, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. And he actually figured this out and was approached by the government and, um, and, and basically, you know, uh, was offered a job with them and so forth. Because he actually figured out by physical, just by physics, calculations that we could not be, our sun could not hold nine planets by itself. There had to be another outside influence. And they, they caught him by seeing his term paper for physics got pushed up to a college level professor. And the next thing you know, he's got you know, CIA guy and the, you know, the black, sh the, you know, the men in black in his house. Jesus. This is back in the eighties. Okay. So anyway, Sam's the one who's been tracking this thing. So I don't want to take credit for this, but we, we listen to all points of view. We have Dr. Alan Miller on to talk about it. We have Marshall masters on our channel to talk about stuff. You know how we go. We roll with everybody, right? Right. We want to see what we got. Well, so we gave Samuel a chance to kind of tell us his story and he's, as it turns out, he's been observing this since 2009, and he watched it roll in. And he has 500,000 pictures or some huge number of pictures. And nobody would listen to this guy, okay? He's just underground. He doesn't want to be noticed by anybody. And he came forward to, to our, to WSO, trusting that we would be honest with his material. And he showed us and, and, and basically made a very good case that we've been riding through the outer skirts of a solar system with giant planets, and we're the ones that are going through perihelion right now, not them. Okay. That's interesting. So, so if you think about a PSYOPs program, which I've been part of in my experience in the Air Force and NSA, okay, so we get trained on this stuff. And what really disturbed me about this particular revelatory moment when I started to look at this as a big planet potential, like we've been in the middle of these things, and instead of these things being far away and little dots on the, on the skyline, the way that they have us all looking is out, right? They have us looking through you know, telescopes, they have us looking through Soho, Lasco, all those things which are way out there, okay? Nobody has anything looking at right close within 10 lunar distances of the Earth or in that range, right? Mm -hmm. So when you open your mind up to that idea, right, all of a sudden, the, the, if you can just let the paradigm switch to we are in the middle of them right now and our planet's being tossed around magnetically because of it, it's, these things start to fit together and piece together better, Rex. The it's far away and it's coming towards us theory just doesn't ring as true to us as the one that says we're basically on the outer limits of their solar or have been on the outer limits of their solar system moving through. You know, it's interesting you bring this up, Steve, because uh, we had a guest on a few weeks ago by uh, somebody that used to be black ops, uh, at least that they say, Sergeant Patty uh, Brackett, and she claims to be, she was inside of all that NASA's equipment doing uh, software upgrades and she was supposedly the person that actually developed the majority of the software for many of these satellite systems and she was showing me footage of over a hundred of these planets that are um, very close to Earth and nobody can see them because of this you know supposed cloaking that's going on and I took it all with a grain of salt you know I'm just thinking okay this is even more um, insane than what you know just one planet coming in but at the same time she was showing me a lot of data and there was other people on that call Steve that were backing up her testimony so either you know they were just a big psyop they were totally you know crazy or she is a hundred percent legit and some of the stuff that she showed me I mean it's uh, it's pretty compelling 
Yeah, and so um, so back to the psyops component of it, though. It's like the lie always is misdirecting. It's just like a magic trick, right? If I can get you looking at those little stars through the all sky cam network, right, and I can get you looking at those little dots and little orbs that that you know may may or may not mean anything, mm -hmm. right? Right. While there's this huge planet that's filling up your whole sky right over your head, that's the way we used to roll, baby. That's how we rolled. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I opened my mind to the big planet theory and looked up, I started to see this stuff for myself, just from a paradigm shift, reminiscent of the Indians who saw the Spaniards coming in. The, there were many in the tribe that could not even see them until they hit the shore because it was such a foreign thing to see ships on the horizon. They didn't even know what it was. They couldn't even acknowledge that it was there. Okay. Right. It was the same phenomenon I felt, I felt like I went through, and I looked up, and, I, and now all of a sudden I look at the sky completely differently. And, yeah, it is. It, do, does it make sense to anything I've been told in school? No. I feel like if this was true, if we really were around these big planetary objects like this, that we'd be basically be a, like a gravitational ping pong ball. Um, but then you look at the data, and you see that as we got closer and closer to these in Sam's theory, that earthquake activity has jumped over a thousand percent. So doesn't that count, right? It's like there's the data right under your nose. You're freaking. You're you're up by a thousand or two thousand percent in earthquake activity, and you're waiting for earthquake activity. Shut up! It's already happening. Right. Exactly. That's the exactly what the way we rolled. We always tried to make you think it was something five times more complicated. Okay. And nine times out of ten, the secrets in the military that I saw were just one of those, like, V8 moments. Like, if I would have just looked at it differently, I would have got it. It's like that magic trick. I try to distract you with the left hand while I'm, you know, while I'm doing something with the right hand or with my right foot, right? And that's how magic works. That's exactly the way psyops work, by the way. Same exact idea. Let me ask you a question, Steve. Uh, I had Dr. Joseph Mara on with us yesterday and he sent some video footage where he was actually recording the sun and to the top left of it I actually would like to show this because it, it's it looks like some amazing footage of a second sun or of a planetary body that looks like a second sun because of the reflection or whatever and he's moving the camera around and he's moving the camera and you can see the lens flares going around right but then there's this one object to the top left that just staying at the exact same spot so he yeah. thinks he's got Planet X, no, no question. I mean, it, it, you know, you can see the lens flares, then you can see these bodies that are staying stationary. So he goes and gets, uh, he says he breaks open a floppy disk and pulls out the iron oxide film that's in a floppy disk, and then he puts it over the camera or something, I guess he says, and he sees that, he does this, he says, 15, 20 minutes later or something, I think, and the, that Planet X, or what he thinks is Planet X, is now in a completely different location a far away, like the you know, unless that thing's moving at a just ridiculous orbit, he says there's no way it could have moved that far. So, I'm trying to figure out why though. I mean, is there just so much heat and light that the sun is going to cause the glare of a, a ref reflection within the lens to stay stationary, or could it very well possibly be that orbit, or just because of where he went back to record it, he wasn't in the same spot, so it looked like it was off balance? Because it's some really good footage. Yeah, I, I'd like to look at that footage, but um, the, 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 so what I'm going to show you first is Australia. This is just a couple days ago was sent to me, and basically this was from one of those webcams down in Australia that's not fish-eyed, and you can see the sun move across the planet. Okay. okay? And then the second one I'm going to show you goes to what you're talking about, which is we think what we're capturing is her, 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 Herculeus. Right. Her, her, you know what? I Say that three times. I can't say it, but the, the main star of the system is what we're being told by people that think they're in the know. And again, I don't claim to know, guys. I'm just trying to get people's point of view. I wish people would understand that, Rex. You and I are just trying to get people's point of view. We don't necessarily believe everything we hear, okay? I just exactly. want you guys to know that, okay? I don't believe everything I hear. I really don't. <laughs> Well, we, we know you don't, Steve. Here's the thing. You, have you noticed that most of the trolls that leave comments actually don't even listen to the podcast? They just read a couple of words, and they think that you're saying that the world's going to end. Because me personally, even if Planet X is real, and there's a lot of stuff that's pointing to the possibility, I don't think that it's going to be an uh, extinction-level event. I think that we're going to thrive through it and still be here. It might kill off some people, yes, but I certainly feel we're going to keep going. So 
Well, um, we're going to start getting into the, that this might not be Planet X theory, too, because there's some people that believe that there's some galactic stuff that we run into from time to time that also could be part of this cycle or explain that cycle. So, you know, we're in a galaxy. There are other bodies in this galaxy. From time to time, you know, solar systems, you know, collide. So I'm not saying everything is Nibiru or Wormwood, but, uh, you know, I am going to tell you that I'm seeing some stuff that's very compelling right now, right? Right. And here's an example of one of those things. So, um, um, basically, this is him, you know, just, just co he's commenting on it. I'm not going to let it play because it will just confuse everybody. But basically, here this thing is. That thing is stationary, okay? That's what I'd expect to see an atmosphere to look like, okay? The red dots are part of some kind of uh, something around the sun that we've been photographing quite often. But here the sun goes right by this thing. Now, you tell me that's a lens flare. And I might have to, I might have to, I might have to plead. I might have to get a plea deal. Because look at this thing. You can see it just stay stationary, and he's freaking out. He's going, what the heck is that? Because the sun moves right past it. Now he's going to pan back out again here in a second so we can see it relative to the whole picture. Are you seeing this, Rex, with me? I or am. am I just that looks like those big spaceships in the Soho images that go around the sun. It, it, again, we don't know what this object was, but when you pan back out again, there's that big sunflower that we get off the sun mm -hmm. these days with all the red petals on it. So there's just your normal sun going right by it. Okay? That's crazy stuff to me. Now, that is crazy. Um, it is. Now, this next one, South Africa, um, this place got really hot, but this is what we've seen in Lyon. We've seen this in, in, south, uh, in the South Pole. We've seen the same phenomenon from Australia. But watch this. See that big red orb in the back? Mm hmm. The sun is moving away from that orb. It's not a lens flare. So basically what you're seeing is we're just basically going around and seeing the side of those two objects in space. Oh, not to mention the big black dot in the sun, right? Yeah, I saw that. That was strange. Well, there you go. Um, but again, you know, here, explain this one to me, guys. You know, I'm getting really sick of people saying lens flare, lens flare. This is the kind of image I get. This is from May 7th. This is from Amersee, um, Deutschland, or Germany. Um, it's one of their addicted sports camps. And I have two objects casting, you know, light or casting light reflections on the water. Oh, that's that right. Look at that. Two different colors, too. Yeah, tell me which one's the sun, Rex. The right one or the left one? That's not a sun dog, either. Dude, they're two different colored reflections. Exactly. Because sun dogs, I mean, I, I was, you know, I did a five minute clip on sun dogs the other day because I've been getting so many pictures uh, with people having the right intentions, but they're sending me pictures of lens flares and kind of showed them how you can tell the difference between a lens flare or an anomaly versus something legit. And look at this. I mean, folks, take a look at that. Two completely different colored reflections there, and that is just incredible. It is. And so, I, you know, what I've done is, like, I, I think what's happened is we've gotten a little bit carried away at WSO because there's a lot of good stuff that if you have a trained eye, you can see it. But if you don't have a trained eye, you're not going to see it. Like that UFO that you saw go around, people can go back and rewind that again to see it. They probably didn't see it the first time. You look really close and you'll see it. It's just like Secure Team whenever you watch one of his videos. Sometimes you'll catch it and sometimes you won't, right? Right. And then a few, a few seconds later, he'll come up and say, okay, did you guys see that? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that we got to avoid on my channel. And we're going to try to slow down a little bit. Right. Right. Because well, people are not keeping up with this. This is developing very quickly. OK. So what is that, man? What is that big red ball back there? Or what? You know, uh, it's concentrated swamp gas. <laughs> it's really concentrated swamp gas. Heavy duty and, stuff, guys. Yeah. And. The all sky cam network does get a lot. I actually give it a hard time too because we see all kinds of dots on these cameras and it's really hard to see stuff, okay? It is. I get it. Except when I see something like this. This is Colorado. I saw the same level of manifestation of whatever that big ball is out there in Australia and the South Pole earlier in the year. Now the difference is we're seeing it in the north, in the northern hemisphere. We've never seen this before. And look at the, it's a three-dimensional object. How could you deny that's a three-dimensional object? That's interesting. That's what's in our sky. You'd never see that. If you look up, that's the whole 360 degree of the sky. You wouldn't believe it if you saw it. So they use our unbelief against us, our skepticism against us. 
so we can't even see this stuff. And then they'll just ridicule you if you bring up a picture like this, even though it's taken from an observatory, okay? They're, the people that maintain this are astronomers, okay? It's not, these aren't just every, you know, this all sky kind of cam network. And then here, you see this? Oh, yeah, look at that. It's it, again. They all seem to kind of fall in the same about same spot. So we're starting to see some corroborating evidence here to say that yeah, there's an object up there. <laughs> there's a it looks like object. the moon. It does, but it's not. The moon would show up much smaller on this camera during the day. You might see it as a little dot. Okay. Nah, that's not the moon for sure. And then we've got our Soho, you know, our typical Soho camera shots where nobody nobody ever wants to talk about these shots except for WSO. <laughs> you the know? Cosmic Pac-Man. Yeah, this guy just jumps in and jumps out of pictures every day. I mean, uh, it's yeah. like you got to catch him on a frame, you know? You know, Steve, I, that was actually what I was referring to a moment ago when I said that looks like the Soho image of those giant spaceships. And I just wanted to bring up uh, uh, that picture that you showed a minute ago, too, where it was kind of transparent and had those zebra stripes. There, I've been getting a lot of photographs of that specific anomaly from different people, different places of the world. So, I mean, this film-type anomaly that we're seeing that's being around the globe, these chemtrails, there could be something to that. Like they're creating this dome of nanoparticulates that reflect everything back just like so you can't see it. Yeah, and uh, I agree. I completely concur. And and to just kind of support what you're saying, let's go on to a uh, Oh, this is from this is from a long time ago. I think I already showed you this one. This is one where we see something right next to the sun back in March. I just wanted to pull this out for my audience, though. When I was doing this rant, I this actually is called the March fifteenth rant. <laughs> I just nice. Rant the whole time because it's like if any if if you call that a sun flare, I mean, come on now. We're looking through a NASA satellite, okay? Take out Mercury. And then here's a sunrise. See that there's that hole in that orb again that we saw on that one other um, view. Uh huh. And this is just a different weather cam in Australia where they can, where they caught a picture of this orb again. But I wanted to get to this one because it kind of confirms what you're saying, which is. And then Dill Martin, man, he put this one up just recently. Did you see this one? Look at that. Yeah, that's huge. So um, what am I trying to get to? Now, that one you just passed, I got that a couple times. If you went back two shots there and um, find that interesting. That here. one? This one? No, this is the Death Star one. I've, I've seen this. That's a great... This one right here. Yeah, that looks like... You just passed it again. It looks like the moon, the entire moon in that one shot of the sky camera. Those just rain droplets. The, the one right after this. This one. What is yes. that? Right. So you think those are rain droplets, right? Right. But when you suck in, I can't do a blow up right now. Um, but it, when you suck in on it, you, you you lose your faith in the rain droplets, and it starts looking like craters. Jeez, because that's what it looks like as craters right now. I'm just you know my mind's trying to come up with the most rational explanation. I I, I can't decide if it's water droplets or craters. But again, we have it's not the first time that we've seen this type of manifestation. We've seen this in Italy. We've seen this in uh, Greece. We've seen it in a couple different places. But this is a this is that member we were talking about the orb. Mm -hmm. This is one of my friends in Australia that actually does uh, amateur astronomy. This is a day filtered shot of the sun, and that's what he captured above the sun there, the the orb with the hole in it. The Death Star. Yeah, and then and then in that lo like a little bit lower to the right there, you can see like what looks like a striped planet partially illuminated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, the yeah, zebra planet. Is, they, yeah. yeah. They, you guys keep, you know, the, 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 the trolls keep saying, where's your a amateur astronomers? And it's like, dude, I have more amateur astronomers now working on this project than, than you even want to know about. And they're all, like, up in arms. Like, for example, why can't you see the horizon, southern horizon at night? Go out there and try to see if you can pick up any stars in the very southern horizon tonight. Just tell me what you see. It's interesting. It's like use, they, a still, use a um, use a IR camera. Do the welding glasses or whatever the welding helmet does that work pretty good in your opinion if you're going to record through that with a camera to pick up anomalies that you might not see no um, remember that these 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 bodies that were that were postulating are there are planetary and not um uh you know there's no fission going on so they don't make their own light right so as soon as you put on a welding glass you've basically you know defeated your purpose because you won't be able to see anything but the sun at that point 
Okay. Because the only reason I ask is there was this one video footage that a guy sent me where that's what he did, and it, you could still see this second sun-looking thing that didn't move, but you could see the the lens flares move, and that just stayed stationary. I thought it was a really good, really good footage. So. Maybe. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not discounting that at all. So if you do see two light sources through a welding glass, that's even that's a double that's a double dinger there because whatever you're seeing has is casting enough light to go through a welding glass. So if he got two dots and then he proved that it wasn't any kind of a flare by moving it around, like you said, yeah. that could have that could have been the other sun having a solar flare, man. I'm not discounting that kind of stuff, but let a lot of people will go through the welding glasses, including me, and then you pick up a flare because you got three panes of glass going on. And <laughs> right. Be careful. You know, that's all I'm saying. Not yeah. Seeing the, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, definitely be careful and use discernment and definitely look for the more rational explanation on, on everything. Now, I don't know if we got into this the last time, um, Rex, but, you know, again, the mother of learning is repetition, I guess. But so... <laughs> We go, we have this, uh, we have a, um, a client, and I hope you'll just block this little name off here for me um, while I show you this, if you can. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We, I can take it, that off. Yeah. yeah. Just take that off for me. But basically, it was a rainwater, um, uh, you know, sample. And what you see here is the aluminum is at 540, and the, 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 the highest regulated dose or level is 50 parts per million. So basically what we're seeing there is a 10 times aluminum, um, you know, and this is a lab test, okay? Uh, this isn't me pulling this stuff out of our yin-yang. This is really the real deal, okay? Mm -hmm. Second one, barium, 39 result parts per million, 5.0 is the recommended level, okay? So there we have another one that's six times, seven times the um, amount of the recommended level. And then he then he further goes down, and I'll just I'll I'll bring up another uh, one of the elements that we found in the rainwater. And again, this points right to the chem trailing, okay? And this is the findings that many people have had. This is just the WSO findings, okay? The findings that we got through our network. Great. And aluminum, if you go study it, Rex, aluminum has the properties of anti radiation and anti um, you know basically yeah anti UV anti light. So aluminum has reflective properties that make it very useful in, if you were going to, say, try to do solar management in the sense of reflecting the sunlight or the additional sunlight out into space. Okay? okay. So we know that's what they're doing with the aluminum now, or at least that's a very strong, very strong, very, very strong theory. Okay? Mm-hmm. Barium is the same thing. It's, it's got, it, and it's got anti, basically anti-radioactive properties as well. And so does aluminum. Like, for example, in dentist offices, they'll have aluminum uh, in, in, infused uh, gypsum drywall to lower the risk of UV radiation. Okay? So these are common uses of these things. Okay? The last one, which I can't show here because I just don't have it, uh, I don't have this document right in front of me, but the other one, which is at extremely high levels, is get this one lithium. Lithium's at 10 or 12. Calm down. That's what you'd think, and that was my first thought, too, until I went and did some research on it and found out that lithium has recently been proved in reducing the ill effects of radiation poisoning. Could that be from, like, Fukushima and all these other, you know, nuclear reactors that are going into meltdown or leaking out all sorts of isotopes, too? Who It could be any number of things, right? I mean, but with the point that points that we're trying to make is they're trying to do geoengineering. This I don't know how much pr more proof you need, okay? You know, well, I mean, type in weather manipulation, folks. Go to Google or any search engine. Type in weather manipulation. The first website that comes up is a company that makes money off of causing it to rain or cloud, seeding the clouds. It's weather manipulation. It's been around for a long time, and I still hear people say, oh, they're contrails. Really? Okay, well, watch the Weather Channel documentary that came out a year and a half ago that openly admitted they're manipulating the weather and geoengineering the planet. So I'll just I'll just leave I'll leave the rest of the conversation on this one. I just want somebody to explain why I've got two different light apparent light sources with two reflections. You know, I really I really want to I really want to hear the explanation for this. You know, and then that's not even to mention this other object that's up here. We don't we won't even talk about the green planet that's coming in. Okay, which we talk about with you all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Right, and they're there being is. picked up all over the place. I mean, all sorts of different astronomers. Uh, you know, pros and ones that aren't are picking up certainly just insane anomalies 
there's there's one image that I have been I've been keeping tucked away in my treasure chest here and I think I'm gonna share it with you because it's almost like one of those shots that's so good it's either yeah. legit or it's photoshopped okay do you want to take the screen just go ahead and take it I think yeah. you just correct yeah let me show this with you real quick here I'm gonna share this with you yes okay. so you can clearly tell that's it that's either photoshopped because that looks too good to be true to me um, or that is definitely a planetary body. So now I've got like, let me see here. I've got several sh of the same shot with just different, um, you know, they inverted one, they changed the other one here. So let me open this up real quick and then we can flip through them all. And I'll get your opinion here. What is your thoughts so far, Steve? Oh, on this one, I already know it's a lens flare. That's a lens flare. Yeah, it's manipulated to look like a complete round object. But if you took, if, if you watch them do the video on it, it would move all over the place. And that one on the right would be a dot in the middle of it with uh, just basically a red half semicircle globe like. And that's a common lens flare. But you can make it look like a planet. And the only thing you'd have to say is, well, if it's a planet, then why is it being illuminated from the top and not the bottom? Yeah. So they just did a really good job of, like, there's that little blue, then your, those red things that you're talking about. No, I could be wrong. No, I'm just, I'm just offering what I think it is. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I think again, you're I, right. I think you're right. I do. I'm just, I'm just showing these up. I was just like, these red things are showing up, like you said, all over the place now, and that's probably from the stuff they're spraying in the atmosphere, wouldn't you think? That, I think there's something going on. Yeah, we think there's actually something going on with the sun, which might also explain a shot like this right, too. So we actually captured evidence of, of their, from the space station, of their pro there could be a possibility that they have some kind of a device that they're using to move the position of the sun in the sky so it doesn't scare people. Okay. I know, that's really far out. I can't even believe it came <laughs> from my mouth. I really can't. But um, if you notice in this picture, this, this, what is the shape of the sun right there? Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not circular, that's for sure. It's like oval. Yeah, it's like a rectangle almost, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. If the sun was really the one that's on the far right, and they're just moving it like that 10 degrees or whatever it is in the sky um, by just redirecting the light of the sun so that we see it in a different part of the sky at all times. I don't know. It's just a theory that we have right now, but there's a lot of footage that we see that looks like they're generating light from a source in the sky making it look like the sun. Uh -huh. And uh, that's probably going to get me fired right there, but yeah. <laughs> Take a look at this one right here. Um, this was sent in, and um, earlier he had a shot, just maybe half an hour before this one, I think, approximately, where the sun was up, and you know, set, is setting down. And then once the sun had completely settled, the, there's this weird red anomaly here, and I'm sure you can see that. So, yeah, you know, I don't know what that is. What's your thought on that one? All right, so. Um if you look at this big, so if you accept the idea that there's a huge disk uh, around, like basically I'm looking at whatever that sun is, or let's say it's the sun, and I'm looking at it, and around there there's a halo, and we have a halo, we get a halo picture every day around the sun. It's a red halo. We've also seen from space pictures from space that halo, and the light shoots out from the side of that that shield or halo or whatever at a very high rate. And this is what I think he's seeing here is the light that's shining through the halo, um, the sunlight that's escaping from the side of the halo. You know, we've got plenty of shots. I mean, tons and tons of shots of this. I wish I could just, you know, pull them up for you. But This was the one that he I took earlier. So this was the sun shot, I think. And then that one was after, at least according to him. So this was the shot of the sun when it was still up. And then when it was down, then there was still that red anomaly thing there. Maybe that could have just been from the, I don't know, like the rays of the sun as it goes down because it is a sunset, but it's still projecting through that reddish type atmosphere or something like that. It is. And, you know, so again, we corroborate. We don't say just one picture tells the story. It's many pictures. So we're exploring a theory that these might be big planets. We're capturing pictures that seem to corroborate that. Um, that they're huge planets. They're still very far away, but they're so big that the Earth, you know, basically they just fill up our whole sky. They fill up from east to west um, because that's how big they are. Um, right now I'm doing some research on, uh, it was a TED talk that it, an astronomer was giving, and, and they were talking about how they've discovered these humongous planets that they've never seen before. But this is just recently released. So it's right at the same time I'm thinking I'm seeing big planets. 
in the sky that all of a sudden we're getting astronomers are talking about big huge planets they're seeing with Kepler. I, come on, man, it's just too synchronous for me to believe that this is a coincidence anymore. You know, Didn't as soon as we start to discover something, they start to release it through news news releases. It's Didn't really strange, Rex. Didn't they just admit that they found 1,238 more planets? They doubled the amount of planets that are within proximity. And do you notice how they keep finding more stuff in the Kuiper Belt? It's like, whoa, we're going to find it. We found a red dwarf now in the, or a brown dwarf in the Kuiper Belt. Did you hear that story? That oh, release? yeah. Yeah, I sure did. I mean, there's so, news wait everywhere. a second. Time out. You just told me you found another sun in our solar system. That's what you just told me, right? But you're a conspiracy theorist if you think it's true. But, yeah, but, again, and, you know, then you've got the whole Scott thing coming out, and they're trying. What the, doesn't this just look like spin control to you, Rex? I mean, you've been in media for a while. I've been in media for a while. It just looks like spin control to me. Like it's spinning out of control. They can't control the message anymore. So now they're going to have to start doing some really quick PR work to make sure everybody, so that there's no blame on NASA, no blame on the government when it comes to pass that we see it in the sky. That's right. What I, I think you're right. And look, at I mean, this is an article from 10 years ago. This is from 2004. NASA, this is an article straight up from NASA that says, oh, well, we found a planet-like body at the fringes of our solar system. Oh, well, if this was 12 years ago, how close is it to us now? I mean, they've been dropping these little hints for over 20 years now. In the 80s, they came out with an article saying that they discovered Planet X. So I just... It's like on one side of the coin, yes, we admit it. It's all over the mainstream news. They come up with all this disinformation. And then on the other side of the coin, if you write about it, talk about it, have a hypothesis about it, just even have a theory about it, then you know what makes me think Planet X is real more than anything else, Steve? What's that, Rex? The trolls. You can show me. I'm telling you, man, you show me a million pictures and I could say, well, you know, there's photos. There's all sorts of ways to manipulate pictures, no matter how good those pictures are, unfortunately. But when you've got so many people attacking this subject and you can tell flat out that they don't care about what you have to say, they don't even listen to it. They're just attacking the titles or they're they're attacking the subject itself. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that says, I don't know if Planet X is real. I'm just bringing people on the show. And then I say, well, I'm questioning that, Bob. You know, I've had Bob on the show many, many times. Great guy. But I think sometimes he just gets so engulfed in wanting to believe he kind of doesn't look at the, the big anyway so my point is the attacks that we get with planet x on leak project and we talk to people from all over the world steve i mean we've got whistleblowers on people that say they've been abducted by aliens or military people or whatever and those things get little troll comments here and there but what gets attacked more than anything is planet x and i go back to the chemtrail days when they were trying to hide chemtrails and nobody would admit it was real except for people that were awake and you would recall the conspiracy theorist all over and now it's openly admitted it's 100 percent proof the chemtrails are real and the shills have kind of backed off on that and now they're coming after the planet x guys yeah and again this is all standard operating procedure psyop right you're trying to get their eye off the ball which and again in my in this particular hypothesis is probably the better word than theory is that this system we have been entering into the system entered in through the outer bands of it a long time ago and we're just basically moving through and out of another solar system and that means that we would have humongous planets in the sky they would have to chemtrail the, the jeebers out of the sky for us not to see it which by the way they've done um so if they don't again it's just like they do everything possible to make us suspicious too it's like they'll never come out with just something and say, hey, let us take you on a ride with the rocket ship with us. And we'll have a camera on it. We'll show you everything around the Earth. You know, just we'll take you on a ride on the NASA rocket, you know. <laughs> they won't do anything like that, you know. Wouldn't that be they cool if they anything. did? What's that? And wouldn't that be cool if they did? All oh, right. <laughs> the chances of us getting real footage would be like zero, though. And how doesn't this doesn't any of this bother anybody? that we have a government that can just lie to us. I mean, put Nibiru aside, put all the stuff aside. You and I, Rex, have seen enough to know that the government, number one, is instilling fear in people that know stuff and they feel afraid to share it because they're afraid of the Gestapo, I mean, sorry, the US government. <laughs> so how are we any different than Nazi Germany was that you can't speak your mind without getting just attacked, okay? And then number two, access to our own scientific data that we paid taxes i mean i pay a lot in taxes don't you pay a lot in taxes uh, yeah absolutely 
I mean, doesn't that give us any property intellectual rights to the property that they're doing as work for hire for us? Because I'll tell you what, if I'm doing work for you, Rex, and I'm sitting in your building and I'm doing work for you, I can't claim ownership for that if I'm a salaried employee, right, for example. Right. Only the business, only the LLC or the corporation can claim the intellectual property for that, right? Such as America. It's a corporation. It, exactly. So my question is, if I want to take a business approach to this, is who owns the intellectual property? Well, it seems to me that if they're working for the American people, the American people are the holders of the intellectual property, and they're doing work for hire. So let's see it. You know, there's got to be a starting point. There needs to be a foundation. I don't know if you knew this. I interviewed Mike Norris yesterday. Uh, and he's the son of Chuck Norris. They just came out with the movie Amerigeddon, and this is well, all right. That interview was a great interview, Rex. I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, thank you. And we actually got cut off during that interview. Three-quarters of the way through the show, I asked him what a good friend of his, Gary, which is actually a big part of this movie, Amerigeddon, and he's a very powerful person and resources and, and knowledge. I said, well, what is, what is Gary doing to set up an establishment to protect the – you know, the future liberties of people because it is important to him. And he started telling me, and then all of a sudden, and he's on a landline, by the way, Steve. All of a sudden, it's... That's my great body at number one. <laughs> What's right? that? that? That's enough to scare the crap out of you. <laughs> well, I mean, it certainly it, it woke me up, but my wi not only did my uh, Wi-Fi get disconnected, but his phone got disconnected, and then he tried calling me back, and it wouldn't go through, and it took about 10 minutes to get back in contact with him. And, you know, it's like freedom of speech. Don't we have that opportunity to speak our minds? I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm saying, hey, this is a, uh, these are ideas. These are possibilities. I bring people that have information and knowledge like yourself on the show that are so well educated because you've just dived into this. I mean, your entire life right now, the, what you're putting into this, and I can tell you're passionate about it. You're not trying to go out and just freak people out. That's the opposite of what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring awareness to the masses and wake people up. And, you know, it's the problem is, Steve, we're the guys that get attacked for this. It's really weird how things work. And I, I remember talking to a good friend of mine. She, she's passed away now. She was an amazing person. And she, you know, I, I talked to her about, well, why do I feel like I have to save people's minds? Because I've always felt like ever since I was a little kid, I need to look out for people because they just, they're always lied to. And I don't know why. And, and she says, well, Rex, you know, don't be that guy. Why not be the villain? Because the villains are the ones that get all the money, all the fame, all the women, all the fortune. The good guys are the ones that never have a girl, and if they do, they can't be with them because they have to hide their identity. They're always getting attacked by people they're trying to save. And it's just like you're either in it because that's who you are as a person and you really want to help people, or you're not. Well, again, you know, that's right. And and uh, so let's say, let's just for a, se a second, let's just assume that Steve is right about everything he's saying, okay? Let's just... For a second, just pretend that you don't think I'm some kind of hack or some kind of whatever. Okay, let's put that away for a second. Let's say that Steve is right, and let's say that there is this thing happening, and that the government does know that this is going to show up in our skies, and that we're going to have a blackout for 15 days, and blah, blah, blah. Let's say that's all going to happen, okay? Now, would you rather know about it, or would you rather not know about it? Would you rather it happen to you just like one day you look up and there's heli army helicopters flying around, all telling you to get back in your homes, uh, FEMA people will be by just shortly to help you and bring water, blah, blah, blah. Would you rather know about this before it came, or would you not rather know about this when it came? So the answer in my mind every time is if you ask that to a Steve that was not aware, I would be pissed at you if you didn't tell me what you knew. I would be. Rex, if that was true, if everything I'm saying is true, and you didn't tell me about it, I wouldn't you as as my friend, wouldn't you be mad about that if I didn't tell you about it? Absolutely, it I would be. Absolutely. Right. So you'd be you'd be betrayed. So now what the, what they're doing to the Nibiru researchers is they're basically the 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 real position I have now is I can't, I can't stop now because I have a moral responsibility. I have seen enough to be convinced. I have seen enough to be completely satisfied that the answer is we are somehow interacting with another solar system. What does that mean in terms of cataclysm? I don't know yet, right? I'm still trying. That's what WSO is all about. We're trying to figure out what we're really facing and what we're really up against. And I'm going to tell you, Rex, we still don't know the whole story. We really don't. But I can tell you we're seeing some pretty compelling stuff. We certainly are. And I just want to let our audience know before we close out tonight, uh, you know, thank you for all the photos you've sent in to me. I've seen some really good ones. And even these ones that seem, wow, I mean, that could, what is that? Is that the blue Kachina? Well, no, I mean, that's lens flare. 
And there's a way you can tell a lot of these times when you see this type of anomaly where there's this really cool aura around the flare itself. I'm getting a lot of these pictures. That's why I just want to bring it up real quick. There's a good way to debunk that. Just take your camera outside and move it around and video, you know, get some video footage and you'll see that thing move around with the camera. So it looks cool, but you know, it's, it's lens flare and keep up, you know, keep looking up you guys cause you're doing a great job. And Steve, I certainly appreciate you coming on, man. I love your energy and there needs to be more people like you. So before we close out tonight, if you would, just let our listeners know a little bit more about what's going on with your high altitude balloon project and how they can help contribute uh, to that project, please. Right on. So um, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can hit the support button or you can also pick up the PayPal address from any of my videos that I put up. And what we're going to be doing is we're lining up the next six launches. So we're trying to build up a little war chest so that we can have all the equipment we need to do it. And then similarly, the ministry right now is, you know, I call it a ministry now. How do you like that? Nice. Um, we're basically starting to, uh, we're, we're starting to actually consider bringing an IT person on staff so that we can start doing more secure management of the photos. 